Hello friends, how's it going? I uh, hope everyone's New Year's was was fun and safe and um, welcome to the New Year. Today uh, what I'm going to do is basically pick up where I left off in the last tutorial and um, I'm going to finish um, my EQ set, my EQ series and I'm going to jump into a little bit of compression. The first thing I'm going to talk about with EQ is uh, it's a term that you guys definitely need to know um, and it's called the sweep. All right, basically what the sweep is, all you do in a sweep is you're moving the band back and forth, which are, you have your EQ plug-in open, and you have your, um, your EQ, the way it looks, uh, the, the way you set up the EQ. You have, you, all you're doing is basically sweeping it back, sweeping it forth um, on either side. That's what, a, that's what a sweep is, okay? It's very important to know, to know that um, as, a, as an EQ term. I want to talk about um, two things. Um, involved with EQ that's very important. One of them is called the low pass filter. This is basically something that you put on to your EQ. Um, so you might want to put a low pass filter on like on some of your uh, your tracks like a bass drum, a kick drum. Um, and basically what it does it allows lower end sounds to pass and it cuts it cuts off the higher end sounds. So you have like your 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 bass drum whatever is like a lower end sound so you want to um, have more of that punch in the track and you want to get rid of the unwanted higher end harmonics that's in that track so what you would do basically is put a, a, a low pass filter on that I know you guys can't see um, my EQ that's open here I apologize I don't have the uh, equipment or the tools for my tutorials that allow you guys to see that but basically that's what a low pass filter is All right. Um, and a high pass filter is the exact opposite. What you would use for um, when you put a high pass filter on a track, you would use that more for your vocals. I, I always put a lot of uh, I always put a high pass filter on a lot of my vocals. Uh, what that does is it allows the higher end sounds to pass and cuts off the lower sounds. So when you when you're recording the track, you don't want the, the lower end sounds, the bass rumble of the track. You may not particularly hear it, but um, there's hard, there's un, unwanted harmonics that may be in your track. And you want to cut that out. What that does is help, it helps you clean the track better, um, and that's called a high pass filter. All right, so um, that's basically it for the EQ: um, low pass filter, high pass filter, and sweep. So make sure you know those terms: high pass filter, low pass filter, sweep. There's uh, there's other things you can learn too, like notch filters and the cue and all that stuff but uh, I'm not going to get into that right now All right. and uh, now let's go ahead and move on to our compression alright uh, oh actually you know what before I do that I want to I want to let you I want to let you guys hear the difference of a low pass filter and a high pass filter if you can hear I'm not sure if you can but I have my track set up here. Dave Serena. Right. Dave Serena. Dave this is going to be a low pass Serena. filter. Dave Serena. Dave Serena. Dave Serena. That's a low pass filter. Dave Serena. Dave Serena. That's a high pass filter. Dave Serena. Dave Serena. All right, so we'll uh, get more into that later. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about compression, all right? Because compression is very important. Uh, when it comes to mixing um, mixing audio. What is compression? All right? Basically, uh, you know, from a definition standpoint, for those who want to know, compression is an automated level control using the input signal to determine the output level. You set compression by using the threshold and ratio controls. Uh, in simpler terms, compression, in my term, is basically making your track sound louder. Um, without actually having to raise the uh, level of the meter, uh, the meter uh, level, whatever the gain of the particular track you have, whatever you call it, without actually having to physically raise it, you use compression to make that track sound louder. It's always important to remember when you're using compression, the rule, the uh, no fader over zero dB rule. What that means is a lot of amateur mixers they, they, they tended to do this and uh, it's definitely a no-no. When you're mixing your tracks you have your faders that are set up at a particular level and sometimes you might say oh that needs to be louder so you actually end up turning up the, uh, the fader above 0 dB. I don't recommend doing that uh, because that's just basically that's just the golden rule that everyone should know if you get, try to get into mixing and engineering 
Never put your faders over 0 dB. If anything, turn them down. Turn them down. Turn them down. If you need to make your track sound louder, that's when compression comes in. So on that particular track, if it's sounding low, don't turn it up with the fader. Actually turn it down. Put on your compressor plug-in, and, and by using the compressor plug-in, you're actually making the track louder. How are you doing this? There's a couple things you need to know when using the compression plug-in. That's very important is you have um, your threshold, your gain, your ratio, your attack, and your release. The gain option on your, on your compressor is where you actually turn it up, but the threshold is important because you have to set your, your uh, track, the compression on the track at a certain threshold. All right? The threshold control uh, determines what signal level the compressor will actually begin to operate in. So you can, like, you can turn your threshold up or down and then that's, that's, that's when you set the threshold. And then to make it louder, you use your gain knob on your compressor and you bring up the gain to bring the track louder. It can get unbelievably loud that way. Um, and that's what I recommend doing instead of turning the fader up. Turn it down a little bit. Set your threshold. Use compression. You also have to set your attack and your release times as well. But I'm not going to get into, into that today. Um, if you want more details on how to use the compressor, stuff like that, um, I could go into it. But I, I recommend you uh, researching on your own, learning about threshold. Um, the gain ratio. Oh, that's another thing I forgot. The ratio. Very important. You got to set your ratio in your, in your compressor. So I usually do in vocals, like if I do like 2 to 1, 4 to 1, uh, 8 to 1. Some people do different things on the ratio. All right, that's very important. So definitely learn about ratio, uh, threshold, and um, gain, attack, release. Those are important components when you're using compression. But remember, the golden rule, no fader over 0 dB. No fader over 0 dB. All right? So that's it for today, guys. That's all the time you have for this particular um, tutorial. Uh, next week, I might get a little bit more into, into those features, threshold ratio. I, I'll probably get into that a little bit more um, and start getting into other things about mixing. But I um, hope you guys learned the basics, some basic stuff about EQ and compression. Remember, with EQ, you got your sweeps. Your, your sweep, your low pass filter, your high pass filter, and compression, no fader over 0 dB. If you need to make your track louder, use compression. Use the gain option, the threshold to set it, and your ratio. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'm Dave Serino, singer, songwriter, producer, engineer. Check out my music on iTunes. It's available um, on, uh, on iTunes. You can go ahead and, and purchase that. I will see you guys next week and look forward to hearing from you. Have a good day.